Now available in paperback and e-readers. John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s in this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Get your copy of John Haynes, 1987 in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Historical Men in Crisis one of my viewers wanted me to do another installment in the Historical Men in Crisis series. And for this installment in the Historical Men in Crisis series, I'm going to be talking about three men, Jack Wayne Reeves, Jonathan Nice, and Hans Reiser. All images used in this video are under fair use of United States copyright law of 1976 and are used in conjunction with my commentary. Now the first historical man in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Jack Wayne Reeves. Now Jack Wayne Reeves is a man who was known for infamously taking the life of an Italian man in 1967, the wife, life of his second wife Sharon Vaughn in 1978, and taking the life of his fourth wife Emily de Villa in 1994, and remains a suspect in the drowning death of his third wife Myung Reeves. Now, Jack Wayne Reeves was born in Wichita Falls, and during his adolescence in the 1950s, he showed his first signs of becoming a beta male by going out here and looking to emulate Elvis Presley by having his hair modded in a pompadour and a ducktail. And as he had his hair in the style of Elvis Presley, he was looking to go out here and trying to gain power in the relationship by marrying his first wife, a 15-year-old girl, a girl who could not consent because she was underage. And this really showed the red flags as related to Jack Wayne Reeves' behavior because Jack Wayne Reeves wanted to have power in the relationship because he possibly felt powerless about his own life and because he felt powerless, he wanted to go out here and have a relationship with someone he could control. And that's possibly why he got involved with this 15-year-old who didn't know anything better. Now, as Jack Wayne Reeves went after this marriage was annulled, he then, at 21 years old, a year later, decided to marry Sharon Vaughn. And as he married Sharon Vaughn, he then enlisted in the Army. And I believe he enlisted, enlisted in the Army because he was feeling inadequate about being a man and hoped to learn something about manhood. But sadly, with beta males, when they enter into places like the military, sadly, it's not a place that can really build these kind of guys up because they start out with a dysfunctional foundation. Now, as Jack Wayne Reeves was in the army, he was stationed in Italy, and, they, and he and his wife had two sons there. Unfortunately, in 1967, Jack Wayne Reeves went out here and started showing signs of being a power simp because he said that an Italian man was spying on him and his wife, Sharon. And as he, was, as they, he says he was allegedly being spied on, Reeves then reacted emotionally by firing a pistol to frighten the man away. However, the bullet ricocheted off an iron railing and wound up striking the man in the chest, taking his life. And Jack Wayne Reeves was then imprisoned for six months and for this manslaughter. And during that time, his mother circulated a petition among Wichita Falls residents getting hundreds of signatures and got it sent to President Johnson at the time who interceded to get Jack Wayne Reeves released and as he got Jack Wayne Reeves released that's when I believe Jack Wayne Reeves went from becoming a man who was deeply troubled to becoming a man in crisis because as Jack Wayne Reeves returned to the US and moved into a small home in Copperas Cove he continued his military career was promoted to sergeant and was stationed overseas while his wife remained in Caparis Cove. Now, as Jack Wayne Reeves was stationed overseas, that's when I believe he further became a man in crisis because it was during that time that Jack Wayne Reeves was out here having relationships with Korean women, and this is where I believe he entered the place I call the secret world. Now, when it comes down to many of these beta males, oftentimes they feel insecure about expressing their natural masculinity and their natural sexuality, and because they feel insecure about expressing their natural masculinity and their natural sexuality, what they do is take those behaviors 
and take them to a place I call the secret world. And inside of that secret world is where they feel safe about expressing their natural masculinity and their sexuality. Unfortunately, many of these men become extremely detached from people. And as they become detached from people, they no longer have any sort of empathy as related to connecting with people they're having relationships with and they see people as objects and that's what I believe happened to Jack Wayne Reeves as he was in Korea as he was out here with the, these Korean women and then when his wife served him with divorce papers what happened was he was devastated because his entire smooth world was disrupted because when it comes to beta males they want to be able to do their dirt in the secret world but then in the real world they want to have everything running right where they have a wife and kids and everything is ideal but in reality his wife was basically um having an affair with another man and as sharon reeves was out here having an affair with another man this basically upended jack reeves smooth world and basically triggered jack reeves into the rage that beta males usually have because Beta males are okay with doing their wrong, but when somebody does wrong alongside them, it really upsets them. And Jack Wayne Reeves needed his world to be smooth where in order for him to be able to function. However, with his wife having an affair with a man and looking to divorce and end the marriage, everything was getting rough. And in order for Jack Wayne Reeves to have his smooth world, he returned from Korea to Kaparis Cove to try to reconcile his marriage and I believe he basically coerced his wife into ending the divorce pa uh, papers and setting aside the divorce and when he did this on July 20th where he set, got his wife convinced to set aside things he went out here and I believe allegedly murdered his wife because that was the night the police were called to the home where they found Sharon Reeves in the bed nude with shot through the chest with a shotgun and Jack Wayne Reeves told the story that after he took his wife out to dinner, they returned home. She signed a will, then had sex. And then after this, she allegedly winds up shooting herself with a shotgun, pulling the trigger allegedly with her toes. That is the, that's the story that Jack Wayne Reeves tried to tell the police as related to the death of Sharon Reeves. And the police almost believed this story and did believe it for a time, but all of the logic of the story made no sense. And the whole thing made no sense because he, she said, because it was like Sharon Reeves had said that she wanted to again divorce this man because she was having an affair with another man. But Jack Wayne Reeves was having affairs and exploits with Korean women, and again he was no longer seeing women as people anymore because he had gone out here and become detached as related to that manslaughter in 1967 and the prison time that he did, and he didn't see his wife as a person. Moreover, he didn't see women as a person that he could go out here and share and bond with. No, like many beta males, I believe Jack Wayne Reeves became a misogynist. And this misogynist basically was looking to use women. And as long as those women agreed with him, his life was smooth. However, when things got rough, what he did was go out here and believe that he could just get rid of these women by taking their lives. And I believe that's what he did as related to his second wife. And as he did this to his second wife, Sharon, he then went out here uh, later on in the 80s and then married, went to Korea and married a Korean woman named Myung Chong. And, and then he returned her to the United States and moved into a small brick home um, in, a, in Iberis Street on a subdivision in Arlington. Now, Jack Wayne Reeves was like many beta males, making things look like he had lots of money because he bought cars, a motorcycle, boats, and expensive pickups but he was really just taking a lot of money from his father. And as he went out here, he took the money from his father, which was over $300,000. He then took the money that his father was looking to hide from his own mother back in the 80s, stashed it, and then put his father in a home. Again, this is how cruel beta males are because beta males don't respect men or male authority. And what he did to his father was extremely cruel. I mean, he took all of his father's money that and, and took money away from his mother and, and refused to return it because the father wanted to hide the money from his mother in the divorce. But what Jack Wayne Reeves did was cold, again, as related to his father, abandoning him in a home while he went out here looking to simp and trick on women. Now, as Jack Wayne Reeves was out here, 
He was using this money to live a high life and make it look like he was a high value man. And as he was doing this, he then got involved with this Myung woman. Who, and again, Myung, he took Myung on a trip where he was going fishing. And he went out here and tried to say that Myung basically was drowned in, in, in the lake that he had went to. However, police are still wondering if that was the case because Myung was a small woman who could not swim and a woman who could not swim really wouldn't want to get in a boat. And, but that's basically, it looks like it's suspect as related to her, her um, demise. And again, since police didn't have enough evidence because Jack Wayne Reeves got them to de rule the death accidental and had her body cremated, there was no evidence as related to things to say that this was a murder. Now, her family disapproved of this cremation. However, they, they, and they all saw things as quite suspect because they looked at the incident and said, and saw that there was something wrong because she wrote letters to relatives telling them that Jacqueline Rees was abusive. And that fits right in line with the pattern and profile of beta males because many beta males become abusive towards women because if that woman doesn't agree with anything that they say, what they do is believe that woman is an enemy, and because they are detached and disconnected from that woman, they believe that they are justified in harming that woman. So with beta males, when they get in relationships with women, the, the woman has to fit into their smooth world, and as long as they're an object agreeing with everything and going along with their smooth world is fine, but the minute they start to show a semblance of humanity by disagreeing with them, that's when those beta, that's when that beta male starts to become angry because this person is showing some semblance of humanity and disagreeing with them, which is what women do in relationships. Women are going to disagree with you, but these men want everything to go their way or no way. And what's really troubling is that after the death of Myung, which we had cremated, he basically disposed of his wife like she was garbage, and just like his sec like his second wife. And within a year, Jack Wayne Reeves had a new wife, Emilita Villa, a Filipino woman who he met through a catalog of mail order brides. And as he got involved with this woman, he then started becoming more protective and controlling. And again, got into a violent altercation with a neighbor who he thought said something derogatory about his wife. Textbook beta male behavior, like the psycho simp. And again, these men, they will try to defend women as long as they can get sexual access and they agree with them. However, when those women disrupt their smooth world, that's when these men basically show how twisted they are. And Jack Wayne Reeves in 1991, he, when Emilita was pregnant, sent her back to the Philippines saying the child wasn't his, but if he married this woman, then that child is his. So that, that really shows again, how your beta male only wants people in his world to be smooth. As long as he's getting sex and sexual access, everything is fine, but he can't see a person as a person because every person in his world is an object. And Emilita was sent back and then eventually wound up disappearing. And then Jack Wayne Reeves moved a Russian woman into his home. Now, Jack Wayne Reeves then moved this woman into his home. She was a Russian woman, she was a Russian um, mail order bride. And again, people wondered what happened to Emilita Reeves. And again, Emilita Reeves returned in 1992 and said that the baby was his. However, the marriage had deteriorated at that time. And she, once she considered leaving Reeves, this triggered his rage. Because again, with beta males, they want to have their world smooth. And anybody going out here and looking to leave a beta male disrupts their smooth world because it says that, they, that, that the beta male did something wrong as related to the marriage. And it means that there's accountability for the beta male. And as a result, what happened with Jack Wayne Reeves was he went out here and his wife basically um, disappeared all of a sudden in 1994. And he told neighbors that she was a bisexual who had affairs with men and women, and her Filipino friends reported her missing. And police approached the, 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 the case and then they asked some questions, but eventually uh, officers started connecting the dots as related to the murder of Sharon Reeves. And as they did investigation on Sharon Reeves, they event eventually Jack Wayne Reeves wound up being forced to confess about the murder of Emilita Reeves who a hunter found her unearthed body in a shallow brave near the creek bed. 
where um, Myung Reeves had drowned and basically found just the bones of her body. And again, this is the type of twisted behavior that beta males participate in. And even that Russian woman, they still haven't found her. But when I look at the case of Jack Wayne Reeves, he's basically like a serial killer in some ways. But it shows how sick and twisted beta males can be when relationships don't go their way. Because a beta male only wants a relationship to go one way and it's their way. And if their world isn't made smooth, they make chaos for others. Or in the worst case scenario, they take people's lives because they feel like they don't have, they're not getting what they want. And again, that shows how sick these beta males are. And at 55 years old, after the uh, mounting evidence as related to the murder of Sharon Reeves and the murder of Emilita Reeves, Jack Wayne Reeves was arrested and convicted in 1996, and he was sent to prison for life in prison. Now, he says that he's innocent, however, the evidence basically shows that he possibly committed these crimes. I mean, he says that his wife had a cut on her toe that says that she wound up commit that she committed suicide, but when they did the forensic evidence, they showed that that wasn't possible. And again, Amelia Reeves was basically left turned into just a skeleton, and again, just shows how twisted this guy is, and he deserves every moment of the 134 years he did in prison, but when I look at Jack Wayne Reeves' behavior, again, it's a textbook example of a beta male man in crisis, and a beta male man in crisis who targeted foreign women, because he knew that if American women basically found out who he was, like his first wife, and found out how sick he was, what would, they would never want anything to do with him. And basically he looked for foreign women to go out here and target because he wanted to be able to have his smooth world. So he's a sign again of the, of the psycho simp and the kind of psycho simp who is the most dangerous kind of man in crisis. Now the second historical man in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Dr. Jonathan Nice. Now Dr. Jonathan Nice is known for allegedly possibly taking the life of his wife Michelle Nice who was found dead in front of the steering wheel of her vehicle where footprints from the vehicle's passenger side were shown but no footprints from the driver's side were shown. And Dr. Jonathan Nice was possibly on the road to becoming a man in crisis even before he met Michelle because Dr. Jonathan Nice was a college professor who was socially awkward and had a hard time having social relationships with people. Now, Dr. Jonathan Nice was so socially awkward that he didn't even know how to socialize with people and eventually wound up getting involved with a Filipina pen pal who was Michelle. And as he got involved with Michelle Riviera from the Philippines as a pen pal, he, he didn't really think about the red flags as related to who he was getting involved with. Now, with many beta males, they are so desperate for female attention that they cannot see that they're, they're violating boundaries because Dr. Jonathan Mice was 40 years old and he decided to get involved with Michelle Riviera, who was a teenager. Now, this would be a relationship that here in the States would be considered criminal, and there would be a restraining order, but Jonathan Nice in the 1980s was able to continue courting this woman and over letters, and again, that's a red flag for me as related to beta males, because um, the, those letters, pen pals, is just the similarity to online dating today, and the people who frequent these types of things usually have serious character flaws, and that's the reason why they're going to these types of um, things like pen pals or personals or online dating, is because they have a hard time socializing with people, and oftentimes they have serious character issues. But Jonathan Nice continued to go out here and court Michelle Riviera over these letters over the course of the 1980s, and during the late 80s, she continued to talk to Jonathan Nice, and eventually in 1990, she decided to travel to the, Fil Jonathan Nice traveled to the Philippines, and the two got married. Now, at that time, Jonathan Nice was a high-value man who had a, not only was a professor in North Carolina, but he was also a, su a successful pharmaceutical researcher and ran his own lucrative company, and his family lived in a luxurious house in Hopewell Township, New Jersey, where he had three children with Michelle Riviera. 
Now, things for Jonathan Nice were going well because his world was smooth, and as long as his world was smooth and he was doing well, everything was fine. However, things as related to his relationship with Michelle were actually deteriorating, and they were deteriorating because oftentimes when women get involved with beta males, these men do not form an emotional connection with a woman. No, they will go out here and they will just have, they will think that because they're making money, they have a relationship with that woman, but they don't get the intangibles of respect from that woman. They don't go out here and get cooperation from that woman. Yes, the woman likes what the man has, but they don't like the man themselves. And that's basically, I believe, what laid the foundation for Jonathan Nice's situation with his wife is starting to deteriorate because Michelle Nice was not getting her emotional needs met as related to the relationship. Yes, she was living a high life because Jonathan Nice was making lots of money, but Jonathan Nice was trying to be possessive of his wife and keeping tabs on her because he was insecure about his wife having a connection with him and things had gotten so bad that Jonathan Nice basically had started to act extremely erratically as related to his wife. And in July 2003, a man called Jonathan Nice to play an audio tape of his wife having sex with someone else, trying to say that he would ask for $500,000 if he wouldn't pay, if, if Jonathan Nice didn't pay, he would release the tapes. And an investigation followed, and eventually Michelle wound up admitting that she had been having an affair with a Michelle de Jesus also known as Alexander Castanea, a family landscaper, and had this affair on Jonathan Nice, and then that relationship basically ended when he began demanding money and began stalking her. Now, this basically proves a point I make about beta, about women who date in beta males. What they will do is, again, these women have no respect for that man because they formed no emotional or spiritual connection with that man. Yes, they, they'll go out here and have sex with that man. They'll even have children with that man, but they have no bond with that man. And because they have no bond with that man emotionally, they have no respect for them. So Jonathan Nice was out here looking to go out here and work on building up his career. He had had his own business. He, had, he was making this asthma drug and he was on his way. But his social life was going in a dire, in a, in, a, in a tailspin because his wife did not respect him. And as she didn't respect him, she got involved with this landscaper, this spare penis that she had on the side as a side dude. And eventually things got so bad that he basically, and, and she basically embarrassed the entire family. And that further disrupted his smooth world as related to things. Because a lot of times with beta males, they'll sit there and they'll say, okay, uh, this my whole life is getting messed up again this woman basically was supposed to be a reflection of me and she has no respect for me and I believe that got into Jonathan Nice's head because he believed he provided a great life for his wife but his wife wasn't satisfied with that life and that's basically what led to Jonathan Nice turning from a nice guy Dr. Jekyll into a Mr. Hyde and as he turned from a Dr. Jekyll into a Mr. Hyde because he felt he couldn't trust his wife Things deteriorated as related to their relationship, and it deteriorated to the point where their lives basically were, were very tense. And it, according to Jonathan Nice, he says that Michelle basically wound up getting to a point where she had been still been out here um, spending time with Miguel at a motel and was returning home. And that's when Jonathan says his wife attacked him in the garage with a knife and then he says that th that after this there was a struggle, and then she wound up um, hitting her head on the floor, and then he put her head put her in the driver's seat of his car and used an ice pick to control the acceleration brake and the brake pedals from the passenger seat, and drove the car into a creek where they found Jonathan Nice's footprints on the passenger side, and then after they found his footprints on the passenger side, it was evidence that he basically wound up taking Michelle Nice's life. And again, after this, Jonathan Nice basically, after he was caught for this crime, he was convicted of manslaughter and tampering with evidence. And in 2005, at 55 years old, he was sentenced to eight years in prison and then was released after five years. And then after being released in prison, Jonathan Nice then wound up 
basically back um, out here in about 2012. He wrote a book about his situation, but in February of 2020, Jonathan Nice was accused of selling dr dr drugs that were, he falsely claimed would cure cancer in dogs, and these drugs were not approved by the FDA, and now he's, in, he's been in prison for, over, for the 30 plus year sentence as related to that crime, but it was that first crime as related to the murder, of the manslaughter of his wife, that showed how much of a beta male he was and showed the dangers of a beta male getting involved with a foreign woman because many foreign women think that the guys who are going out here looking to court them on online dating or these mail order bride things are good American men. No, these are the worst of American men. And again, these types of beta males, they have issues as related to power and control because they're insecure about relationships. They have a hard time connecting with people. They have a hard time reading red flags. They have a hard time reading body language. And again, these men are not looking to seek to have any sort of personal or emotional connection with a woman because in their eyes women are objects that fit into their smooth world and that's what Jonathan Nice wanted in a woman somebody who would fit into his smooth world somebody who would fit into his world and be able to just go along to get along providing him with sexual access and uh, praise that's what he wanted in a woman but that just showed how much of a man in crisis he was as related to relationships and how he had a hard time being able to socialize with people because Jonathan Nice was the was the pinnacle of the nice guy and he showed us how not nice these men in crisis actually are. Now the third historical man in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Hans Reiser. Now Hans Reiser was somebody who founded a company named Sys and was a big wheel in the tech industry going out here and creating the Riser FS computer file system which was used with Linux and its attempted successor Riser 4. So Hans Riser was very brilliant as related to computers and technology. Unfortunately he was very bad with people and that's one of the reasons why he became a man in crisis. Now Hans Riser was born in Oakland, California to Ramon Riser and Beverly Riser and grew up in Oakland, California, grew up going to public schools. And he started on the road to becoming a man in crisis because his beta male father didn't teach him male life skills and male survival skills. And when he was 13 years old, he started to express his disdain for the public school system, saying it was overly rigid and he was constantly being ridiculed and bullied by his peers. And his inability to socialize and be able to function in social situations basically started him on the road to becoming a man in crisis because since he did not learn how to work with people and did not develop interpersonal skills, this is one of the reasons why he had serious problems in his personal life even though he was a professional success. Now, Hans Reiser, through white privilege, I believe, was able to get accepted into University of California, Berkeley and attended this university at from his age of 15 to 28 to the point where he got a BS in computer science at 28 years old and while he said he wanted to pursue higher education he did not pursue a PhD for the same reasons he dropped out of hot junior high school and that was because he had poor interpersonal skills he had poor people skills and he had a hard time being able to navigate social situations and because he had a hard time navigating social situations he had a hard time dealing with people and this is possibly one of the reasons why he further had problems as related to his relationship with his wife in the future because he never learned how to work through his social anxiety his social awkwardness as related to being bullied and again didn't understand how to develop the resolve to navigate these type of situations or stand up for himself so he went out here and instead of him pursuing the phd he worked part to full time in the in the it field for california software company namesis and and his own company and before that he worked with synopsis ibm research permios company and acute information system so he worked for a lot of it companies and got a lot of opportunities working in it and as he was working in it 
he and developed his own company. He then developed computer file systems called the Riser FS and the Riser F4, which are available on Linux and are part of the Linux system. And again, a brilliant man, but sadly a man with poor social and interpersonal skills and really had a lot of serious problems as related to his interpersonal skills. So that's one of the reasons why he went out here and decided to, while he was working in Russia, to go out here and select a mail order bride in 1998. And the reason why he did this is because he had really poor interpersonal skills because mail order brides, the personals, and online dating are all the same. And the people who go out here and approach these types of things for relationships usually have poor interpersonal skills. And again, they, these are red flags because a person can, any person can go out here and pursue a relationship with people by picking up social cues and nonverbal cues. But these guys can't do this. And again, he went out here and ordered a Russian woman from a mail order bribe, arranged to meet her. However, he wound up meeting Nina, who was an interpreter and was a Russian-born trained obstetrician and gynocentric gynecologist and was trained to become an American OBGYN. And I guess when she heard about his success as related to IT, she decided to get involved with, with um, Riser. And as she got involved with Riser, what happened was, was she decided to marry him and then they decided to have two children. But that's where Hans Riser's father, the be another beta male, tried to say that he was that Nina was having problems as related to the relationship and again saying Nina was fabricating illnesses as related to the children and this was basically one of the things that the father was doing also saying that were, she was doing things to try to get his money putting paranoia inside of Hans Reiser's mind and again this is what happens with beta males a beta male father will go out here and tell his son that his wife is not somebody he can trust and talk about how, how things are not going well in the relationship. And this basically exacerbated Hans Reiser's insecurities, and Hans Reiser started having insecurities as related to his wife, and as he started having insecurities as related to his wife, this is what led to their relationship deteriorating, and their relationship eventually wound up deteriorating because Hans Reiser, like many beta males, did not really want to get to know his family or anything about his wife because again with beta males they do not know how to connect with a person emotionally mentally or spiritually no they are very detached from the people they're involved with and that makes it hard for anybody to get close to them and this combined with the father going out here and saying Nina had been lying about the fast shrinking reserves of namesis, which basically should not even have been in her name, that that and him saying that he was doing things to the children led to the relationship between Hans Reiser and his wife Nina deteriorating. And again, things got so bad that Hans Reiser allegedly abused Nina, and then this led to her getting a restraining order against Hans after he pushed divorce proceedings. And again, he pushed divorce proceedings because of his father, again, and another insecure beta male, and this led to a true a, a one-year restraining order, which prevented him from being able to go after Nina Riser. But this didn't really change anything because with beta males, in order for their world to be smooth, there can be no problems, conflicts, or obstacles. And with beta males, in order for their world to be smooth, everything has to be in the exact same place that they want. And in order for Hans Reiser's world to be smooth, he believed that he needed to go out here and get rid of Nina. Now, Nina went to go meet Hans Reiser to pick up the children or drop the children off. And she was supposed to go meet a best friend at her house later that evening. But she had not been seen since September 3rd of 2006. And that's where people were wondering what happened to her when her minivan was found on September 9th. Um, in a in a with the groceries still inside of a minivan where it had been parked since September 5th and that's where people found some things wrong with the story as related to the disappearance of Nina Reiser and Hans Reiser things were found to be suspect because he had been driving a 1988 seat Sonda Civic CRX and went out here and the passenger seat was missing and that then that was also some things to be led to be about it being suspect and eventually the police began doing an investigation as related to the case and wondered what about a blood spatter found in Hans Reiser's house and car 
include and then as they did DNA analysis on it they wondered what what happened to Nina Reiser and again as they were looking to find out what happened to Nina Reiser they eventually made Hans Reiser the suspect in the trial and eventually Hans Reiser then pleaded not guilty and as the trial was getting ready to start eventually things were falling apart for Hans Reiser and again as related to the preliminary hearings and then Hans Reiser pleaded um, not gu guilty and then the trial began and then eventually Hans was found guilty of first-degree murder. So in 2008, Hans Reiser was found guilty of first-degree murder after it was found that he went out here and had taken the life of Nina Reiser and they found her body in a shallow grave of the remains of her body. And again, this is par for the course with beta males because they want to have their world smooth and in their world, they go out here and try to hide the evidence of women that they take their lives of. They try to hide the evidence of these women's lives being taken by burying their bodies and then going on with their life because they're going to have their smooth world if they have to take you out of the way as an obstacle because with beta males, this is how they operate and this is what makes them extremely dangerous for a woman to get involved with because the minute things in their lives start to get rough as related to conflict these men will go out of their way to try to end a woman's life because they want to get rid of her to get back to that world of smooth and again this is what this man did because of the mistrust seated in him by another beta male which was his father and this beta male father i believe was jealous of his son's success and because he was jealous of his son's success he went out here looking to undermine his son because he was jealous of him having greater success than he did. And this is what led to him looking to go out here and create the friction between him and his wife and eventually lead to his son participating in this crime. And as Hans Reiser, after he committed this crime, he signed a plea deal saying that he could not appeal his case ever again and had to spend 15 and is now in the middle of a 15 to a life sentence where he has, in 2009, been beaten up by inmates like Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, and Big Dave, and was considered, again, having to deal with the issues that he wanted to avoid in junior high school as related to bullies. I mean, Hans Reiser wanted to avoid conflict all his life, and now he has to deal with conflict inside of the penitentiary with Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, and Big Dave, and that's what beta males don't really understand. You can't avoid conflict. You have to confront it. You have to face it. Because even though Hans Reiser managed to elude all of these things as related to his life and trying to get success, he wound up eventually having to deal with them inside of the penitentiary where he cannot get out of this penitentiary where he's dealing with men and now dealing with the issues as related to men he was looking to avoid. And now that he's looking to, now he cannot avoid these issues as related to men. He's in a situation where he is a man in crisis, and as a man in crisis, his life is in the worst place because he went from being a successful IT businessman to becoming a boyfriend for Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, and Big Dave, and being traded for Little Debbie Snack Cakes, Raymond Noodles, Packets of Crystal Light, Packets of Taster's Choice Coffee, um, Peppermint Balls, Marshmallow Peeps, Kit Kat Candy Bars, off-brand lemon cookies, off-brand Oreo cookies, Hunts Pack, Snack Pack puddings. This is the life that Hans Reiser is in right now, all because he wanted to have a smooth world, avoiding bullies, and now he's in a place where he's dealing with life being very rough for him as he's turned to, as his head is tight and turned into a wide receiver, and again, all because he could not deal with bullies and deal with uh, people pushing and not pushing back and, and taking his power as a man and that because he couldn't take his power as a man he went from a man who had great wealth as an IT expert to becoming a man in crisis who's being in the penitentiary. Now if you want to learn more about what motivates beta males to participate in their spectrum of violent behaviors and what leads to them on becoming on the road to becoming men in crisis you can pick up my book from Man Crisis on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. And if you'd like to see me make more videos about the historical men in crisis, 
you can pick you can go out here and send a donation to the cash app or the paypal with the and if i know something about that historical man in crisis i will make that video for you that's all i have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today.